Kyle. And this is Cascade, our 1995 International School Bus with the DT 466 engine. And we're going to start with the outside. Basically, we went through and replaced all the lights with LEDs just because they're more efficient and halogens are old, outdated technology. So on this side, we basically replaced the original school bus door with an RV one. I would highly recommend it. It's a lot more secure and it seals better. That's key. We also did a DIY Raptor liner paint and I would recommend that as well because it doesn't scratch. It's easy to touch up and you could do it at home with basically a simple air compressor and the kit. Then we replaced all the original bus windows with sheet metal and then cut in windows for RVs or windows from RVs and that has helped seal up a lot and insulate a lot better. Totally changed the look of it too. This is our rooftop deck. It houses our 900 watts of solar panels. We also have Rome Adventure storage boxes, the Max Air Fan, and the Cubic Mini Chimney. That's our roof docking deck and stuff. It was welded together with one inch tubing. Yeah. And we added our sweet hammock mount. I can get it. This was definitely one of my top three things that I needed. All right, so that's it for the outside. Come on in with us. All right, let's go in. These are our stairs. So basically what I did was I lined it with just strip wood. So I ripped down a bunch of oak and birch and just basic plywood and then glued it all around and then used the same flooring we have inside for the stair treads. Um, and then over here we took out the original heater, went and just built a basic shoe rack in there. So, you know, you gotta have a lot of shoes when you live on the road. So inside we took down all the original ceiling panels and did spray foam insulation. And then I got the great pleasure of riveting it all back up. As Caitlin says, it's very riveting stuff. And then over here, we basically cut out a bunch of dead space to build in a bookshelf, which is just a simple cubby with the leather strap to hold stuff in. And then in this area, we redid the whole switch panel to rewire the bus essentially from its original wiring. So we have what we need for all of our exterior lighting and fans and everything, stereo, and then added some storage around and hat mounts and all that sort of stuff. All right, so this is our hammock swing. We welded a nut to the frame when the ceiling was down. You know, we just like to hang out. We typically open our handicap door when we, you know, have the swing up, so. This is our bathroom, full length mirror, obviously. And then it slides right open. We got the tiled shower. Our composting toilet is on a teak slide, so you can bring it all the way out. And the simple thing about it was instead of having a door that kind of blocked off the rest of the bus, we wanted to do slides so it kept everything, you're able to move through the bus still and not be closed off or have to shut something to get somewhere else when someone was trying to shower or go to the bathroom. And then we have a shower curtain, so we're able to leave the door open, obviously. And this is our couch slash guest bed slash Kaylin's seat when we drive. Basically, we've made it so it slides out into like a queen size bed. And then on the end, we actually use the table as the end of the couch and it clips onto the handicap door so it flips out that way. So we can, you know, sit at a table or This work. is where I typically work. And then underneath the couch is where I house all of my art supplies. All right, and the cushions are from Urban Outfitters. They're technically day bed cushions and we built the length of the couch around them. So we did 12 volt LED puck lights throughout, which are pretty common for the bus world. And then over on the wall, we wanted to have a little ambiance. So we added some sconces that are 110 with Edison bulbs and they have a little switch on them. So you can just turn them on and sets the mood. So over here we have our fridge. We have a little box of storage for camera equipment, wires, stuff like that. And just more storage over here. And then our diesel heater comes out right here next to the bed. The fridge is 110 and it draws a lot of power. I wanted it because it matches our vintage stove, but that was a compromise because it does take a lot of power from our solar system, so. All right, this is our bed area where the magic happens. No, this is our queen size bed. It's a Tempur-Pedic and we actually bought it before we bought the bus. So 
We weren't going to get rid of it, so we had to build the bus around it. And then back in the corner here we have Sirocco 360 degree rotating fans. So they actually are amazing for bus life. So you can rotate them every which direction. They have three speeds. They, they do it all and they're amazing. And then for our window coverings, it's just regular Reflectix, but I wrapped it in some black vinyl to help with black, blacking out the windows for the light. It definitely helps with the temperature control back here. Back here, like we did in the front, we put in another cubby. I usually use it for like my nightstand for phone, water, tea, whatever. But it's just, you know, another way to use wasted space behind the panel. And make it look nice. All right, and this is our closet. We used rattan, so Kyle cut out the shape uh, that I wanted and then put the rattan in. Makes it look pretty nice. Again with the sliders you know, to not block off the rest of the Yeah, space. it helps with space inside the bus. And then we have a nice size closet so we can hang, you know, our long things over here where the laundry basket's at. And then our drawers. And then for this drawer setup, we it's a frameless setup, so we had to go with external latches. So that's literally how it latches when we drive. And then you just simple push and you're open. And then our solar battery monitor keeps it hidden out of the way so we don't have the light blaring on us during the night. And so for our, our solar, again, we have 900 watts of grape solar out of Eugene, Oregon panels on top. Isaac loves those. And then we went with Lion Energy lithium batteries that are all housed under the bed. We have 540 amp hours. And then for our components, we went with Victron. So charge controller, inverter, battery monitor, everything is Victron and it's all housed underneath the bed as well in a secure you know, safe spot so you don't get any damage to it. So a lot of people ask us how much it costs to build this and the time frame it took us. So working a full-time job and doing this, it took us about two years to complete before we hit the road. And our overall budget is roughly $30,000 for it. The solar system alone cost 10,000 and the bus itself before we built it out was just under $4,100. So this is our kitchen. We have a 1950s vintage range and it runs on propane. These are Ikea cabinets that we got and we just added the poles. Pretty nice, sneaky drawers. And let's see, we got some more storage up here. Our Cubic Mini. What do you guys think about that? We love the Cubic Mini, but we did realize that it's not ideal for under like, well, I don't know, 30 degree heat. <laughs> so we do have, you know, our diesel heater for that. But it sets the ambiance. It's nice for 30 to 40 degree weather and just make a fire and hang out. Mm -hmm. We went with quartz countertops. One we liked, we want white and they're most, more durable because it's a man-made stone counter, question mark. And then we went with a, I think it's a graphite sink, so basically it's scratch resistant. Um, and we've put cast irons in here, we've put knives, everything, it hasn't been, it's been great, it hasn't scratched or anything. And then we have 100 gallons of fresh water on board. Um, we have a tankless hot water heater by Gerard, and so it takes about five seconds and you have piping hot, hot water and that feeds our sink obviously and then our shower. And then we did a Berkey filtration system instead of having built-in filters. So you just, it's a gravity feed, you fill it in from the top and then about 42 gallon gray tank and that's it. A lot of people ask like what advice you'd give to a new builder or someone that wants to get in the lifestyle. And honestly, our biggest thing is we always just tell people to embrace the suck. There's going to be shitty days. There's going to be days where you break down or things aren't going right. You're going to get stressed out, your spouse or partner or whatever, and it's just part of it. And you'll get through it. It's not all sunsets and pretty views. It's going to be Walmart parking lots and shitting in a porter potty on the side <laughs> of the highway. It's all part of the fun, I think. And when you do have shitty days, or you break down, or you don't know how to build something, you can just call Kyle. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do consulting on the side, so if you have questions or issues or need advice on repairs, just reach out to me. Uh, just call Kyle on Instagram and happy to help. And so for the IKEA cabinets, they come with crappy legs, so we actually ended up building our own frame for them to sit on. And we wanted to add more storage, so we added some kick drawers. So you got, you know, pots and pans and 
all that sort of stuff. And then there's one on the other side for the stove top stuff when we drive. And just another sneaky way to add more storage to a small space. Wherever you can. So on the road, we both work remotely. Kyle works in HR and I work for myself as a modern calligrapher. So I do wedding signage and stationery. All right, so Kaylin, Kyle, and this is Cake. <laughs> and this is our bus cascade again, and we're roaming rivers, and there will be links below to see more of our build and our story on Instagram. <laughs>